Hello, everybody. I have missed y'all. Hello. How is everybody? Hello. We have good day. Hello. Hello. Kyra. Hello. Let's see. Tracy. Kathy. Seem like I missed somebody. Huh? Miranda. Hello. Hello. Nancy. Kathy. Good day. Tracy. Kyra. Just make it sure I didn't miss anybody. Je Giovanna. Hello. Hello. How is everybody? So do y'all want to hear a little quick, funny, stupid story about how dumb your fearless leader is? So Wednesday, I'm walking along. I'm having a great day. I go shopping in the morning, drop little baby off the school, go shopping, get home. I'm peeling around, tending with the dogs. All of a sudden, I get this like tightening in my back and in my chest and it doesn't stop. So I'm like, oh, God, oh, God, something's wrong. So I end up in the hospital thinking I'm having either a heart attack or, uh, I don't know, my body's working against me to just kill me suddenly. I don't exactly know what I thought. Back spasms, massive, severe back spasms. Ain't that some shit? So needs to say I will never be going to the ER again. Never. What's up, Sapito? So, yeah, that's what happened to me Wednesday. Yeah, it was totally stupid and ridiculous, but um, apparently it's a real thing and people struggle with it and I'm not the first and, you know, anxiety attack. Yeah. I, yeah. Once I, it was, it was so rough. It was so rough. Uh, I was scared. I'm not even going to lie. My mom had already had a first major heart attack by the time she was my age. She's got the worst health of any person I ever know. So it doesn't pay to be hyper vigilant. Uh, I felt a little sheepish, but I mean, praise God, it wasn't a heart attack. That was the moment for me when I told the nurse, I said the same thing. I'm going to be so mad. Like I'm hooked up. They got me hooked up to all these machines, these EKG shit. So I was thought, I told the nurse, I'm going to be so mad if this is just like a dumb back spasm or something. She says, you need to be grateful. I was like, you got a good point, ma'am. You got a really good point. So I am grateful. Amy J. Hello, baby. Sapito. Short cake. Hello. Hello. Uh. You know, that feels like scary. Yeah, man, it freaked me out. Well, and <laughs> this is not the first time. I guess, I don't know, maybe 28. I was 28. But I used to work at a, a print press, a newspaper. And they had these big bins. Well, I had pulled a muscle in my chest. S similar, but this was like my back, my chest. I was like, oh, my God. All these years of smoke, it's finally caught off with me. COVID was another thing, Giovanna. I was like, oh my God, they say the back pain. I'm going to take it back. No, no, I'm just uh, old and crackly. What, uh, old and janky is my signature move. So, <laughs> but yeah, it, I ain't even going to lie, man. And it, it really did scare me. <laughs> I was lying there to all these machines. I was like, this is a little, look at a little scared here. And they're like, oh, we need more blood. We need to make sure of something. I mean, something so dumb and normal. You know, I'm like, more blood. Well, what does that mean? Oh, it means you're a big old fucking old sissy is what it means. <laughs> oh, Aaron, hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. Oh, yeah. But I'm fine, man. It's so stupid. So the lady at the local little CBD place, she was telling me, she's like, go over here to this chiropractor. So I really think that... <laughs> Uh, I'm, I might be farting dust at some point, Tracy, soon. I imagine it. I I, I imagine it. Yes. But yeah, Giovanni, you're right, man. It, it, but you know what's funny, though? They just asked, do you have any symptoms of it? I'm like, no. They didn't test me. They didn't do none of it. It wasn't no, oh, no. And since you bring up COVID, I just, I don't know. Most of y'all are probably aware. Please, please, please send the biggest good vibes, prayers, well wishes, anything you got. To put out into the universe, send them chasing truth in her family. They, their whole family has been struck by COVID, man. And this is not, uh, you know, just say some prayers for them over there because, um, you know, it's just sad. It's, it's sad. It's scary, you know, and, um, it could totally happen to anybody, you know, they don't seem like much different from me and my own man, but same age, healthy, everything's fine. So just send warm wishes and, you know, whatever you do, send positive shit, prayers, prayers, prayers over there to chasing truth and her family and anybody else, you know, but yeah, 
the COVID gave you bad anxiety. Oh, well, I, you know, I don't, you know, I don't have any of that. You know, it's just the, uh, my back, but like it started easing up, you know, but yeah, I, I was scared. I was a little scared. So, um, I got some stories I want to talk about. I actually have another one that I found that's not added Two actually, but I think one of them I'm going to do an isolated video, but, um, uh, do the Mac, let it get dance. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, God. So, I guess we can hop into this Mercedes Lane, this awful story. I did find, actually, let me, I, did, I had another, let me pull this up real quick. Because I sent myself something uh, about this case. So, hold on one second. Let me get that pulled up. Yeah, it was, um. Yeah, it freaked me out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Just because you don't know, man. And it's like you don't want to overreact. You know, you don't want to do any of that stuff. But at the same time, you're like, oh, man. Like, I, could, I couldn't even catch my breath. So, when I couldn't catch my breath, I was like, yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is pretty shitty, man. Okay. So, let's see. Hold on, give me half a second. Just trying to get this one article pulled or one video pulled up. All right. All right. Now hop back over here to y'all. All right. Now let's see. Mm. Uh oh. Today, the parents of 11 month old Mercedes Lane and her babysitter are expected to appear in court today. Hey. All this coming up. Hold on, y'all. You got jumped ahead of me. All right, so as many of y'all are aware of this sweet 11-month-old baby, Mercedes Lane. Oh, my God, this is just awful. Let's check this out. Let me see. Oh, thank you, Miranda says, real relaxed massage chair starter fun for Beaver. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, that's sweet. Sister, what's up, baby? Thank you, honey. Thank you so much, Miranda. Yeah, I'm going to do something. I think I am just gonna go see this chiropractor the you know my little lady swears by him, but I've also heard that chiropractor could be bad but it doesn't matter I can't you know curl up and die so <laughs> we should probably get in the solution at some point all right so let me see did I hear about the decayed body found in dangerous Tennessee no when did that happen is it for today I have not heard of that which is kind of surprising I've been on the uh, yeah, I haven't. Oh my God. That makes my stomach turn. No, I haven't heard of that. Okay. Let me see. All right. Uh, let's do this one first. Let's do this one first. This, this recent Amber Alert. Let's do this one. Have y'all seen this? This is a new Amber Alert out of Milwaukee. It's pretty freaking terrifying. Actually, yeah. Just, I'm not going to say nothing, but just listen. Just listen. It's Friday morning. We will get to that breaking news. A Milwaukee teenager is missing, and Amelia Jones is tracking the Amber Alert this morning live for us near 59th and Center, the last place the boy was seen. And Amelia yes, Sapito, it's awful. Listen to this. It's crazy. His mother said that what she saw last night when her 12-year-old son yeah. was taken is something that she thought only happens in movies. Uh, police need your help right now finding is 12-year-old Terrence Trammell. He was last seen around 8.40 last night when he was taking out the trash. His mother said that as he was taking out the... I do want to say again, why can we not get a picture? I mean, he's literally got stuff hanging out of his mouth. I don't, I don't know why. We can't get a good solid picture off the rip. But nonetheless, this is a 12-year-old boy, 5 feet, 3 inches tall, 120 pounds. He was taking the trash out. Men got Four men got out and grabbed him. Silver sedan. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy. This just happened last night. The trash, that's when a silver sedan, possibly a Kia or Chevy Impala, pulled up. Four men got out of the car and then forced Terrence into the car, driving off north on 59th yeah. Street. She says her heart is heavy. She hasn't slept. And all she wants is her baby boy home safe. Who knows where my son could be? And I'm just wishing for the best and hoping for the best. But at the same time, my heart is shattered my mind is in trembles I, I don't know what to do so this mom I, I wonder if he just if he goes off sometimes but like actively they 
jump out and grab him. I don't, I don't know, man. I just, uh, it didn't sound like this is the first thing that first time this is, I don't, let me just shut up. Cause you know, I don't know. It just, she just seems kind of like she's just talking. Like she just saw a car wreck or something. Nothing, you know, it's not, not even a car wreck. Like somebody run over a stop sign or something. Like, I don't know. She just sounds I, like, I don't know if the boy goes off with people sometimes, but the way this is described, they jump out, snatch the kid, like against his will, snatch him like a whole event, you know, but I don't know. I'm, I might be way reading more, way more into it. You know, it's absolutely possible. Say, hoping for the best, but at the same time, Bank Street. She says her heart is heavy. She hasn't slept, and all she wants is her baby boy hey, Janet. safe. Who knows where my son could be? Hey, HG Money. Man, oh, oh. For the best, say, hoping for the best, but at the same time, my I want to, and, um, uh, Rayland Finley, I don't know if y'all seen the community post, and thank you for coming to the stream. Uh, SG Money, I can't see the chat right now, I think is your handle, but uh, she's been found, she's been found safe. So, praise God, praise God for that. So, I didn't know if y'all heard, and I saw you in the chat, and like, God is good every my day. It's shattered, my mind is in. Let me read back. I don't know. She said, Her heart is shattered. I, who knows where my son could be. When she said that, my heart is in tremble. My my mind is in trembles. It when she said it, it made me think of Candace with Summer Wells saying, "It just smothers me." I don't know. It's just some sometimes words just kind of have a way of jumping out and grabbing you. I don't even know if trim. You know, I don't even know if that's in the right context. But and I'm just. She hasn't slept, and all she wants is her baby boy home safe. Who knows where my son could be? And I'm just wishing for the best and hoping for the best. But at the same time, my heart is shattered. Yeah. My mind is in trembles. I, I don't know what to do. Police say that they are looking for four suspects, four African-American men. It was a male in Tennessee. Described to be wearing black Nike Air Force Ones. Now, <gasps> Terrence. Miranda, I thought the same thing. I thought him. I thought the same thing. I wonder if it's. If I wonder if it's something like that, you know, or maybe he, this kid pissed the wrong people off or something. I don't know, but yeah, it did. I did think that, and I, but I also thought a lot of shit. We what is the one in um in the Bronx just a few weeks ago? This mother and her. It was either two or three children, but three men jump out. Two or three men. No, it was two men because one of them was a son and one was a dad. The guy had mental illness. But anyways, nonetheless, they jump out and try to grab the kid. So I don't know if y'all remember that in the Bronx. I believe it was. It was that, you know, we had those three weeks where every week there was an attempted kidnap and that was caught on camera. So, um, well, the one was a rescue caught on camera. Pounds, it was last seen wearing a Nike shirt with red lettering, black pants with rhinestones on them, and white Nike composite shoes with blue lines on them. If you have seen Terrence or a car matching that description, a silver sedan, possibly a Kia yeah. or a Chevy Impala, you are asked to call Milwaukee police immediately. Yes, yeah, scary. Reporting live at 59th and Center, Amelia Jones, Fox 6 News. And this is all that's really came out about this. So, and I just seen it. So I wanted to put it out there and, um, you know, that's really it. They're not saying too much, but, uh, nonetheless, Terrence Trammell, uh, Trammell, Trammell, but he's missing and Amber Alert has been issued. So let's see. What's another one? I think I'm going to wait on Mercedes. Um, second, mer oh yeah. Did y'all hear about the three-year-old out of Mobile, Alabama? It's pretty bad. Okay, let's look at this one. This is great. Hey, honey bunch. Welcome, baby. Those of y'all that have been following the channel, y'all know we have been covering Xavier, sweet Xavier in uh, Iowa, 11 years old, went missing. So this is fantastic. His mother has done an on-camera interview with local news. This is really good, and uh, I'm I'm really happy. She was out there at the state fair passing out flyers. So let's just take a watch, which we're probably going to hit an ad first, but I was glad to see her out there. Ah, I thought Joining he was going to escape it, but he did not. Of contacting 811 before you did. 
is my alter ego. Yes, Sarah Harrelson and a group of volunteers spent the afternoon and evening here at the State Fair handing out flyers to anyone they came in contact with. Walking with a purpose. We are out here spreading the word for Xavier Harrelson. This small orange army of volunteers did not miss an opportunity. You're Thank you so more much. than welcome. God bless you. To share Xavier Harrelson's hey, picture. We love you. We're not going to stop looking for you. We're going to find you. Man. Publicly quiet until now. Home. Unless you're on YouTube. Sarah Harrelson says she finally has the strength to speak up for her 11-year-old son. I just want to tell Xavier vanished in Montezuma in May. Just And say what you will, you know, I, you know, I probably wouldn't don't agree with everything the way it is done whether it be police enforcement or parent, but I don't have a missing kid. I pray to God I have I never have to find out how I'm supposed to act. But but you know, end results the same. I was so ecstatic. I, I had somebody reach out show me this like, look, like it's a big deal, uh, you know, in general. And I think it's amazing. And uh, I, I hope to see more of this. Inside Edition also, praise God, covered Xavier's story. So, I mean, it's all to the good. It's all to the good. And uh, they are Xavier's warriors. They're still out there, boots on the ground, passing out flyers, trying to get the message out that this baby is still missing. I mean, um, you can't go back in time. You know, and we've seen the interview and everything, you know, but I'm so glad she's out there and uh, she's advocating for her son. And uh, I was really happy about this. Frank, you know? to speak up for her 11 year old son. I just want to tell him. Xavier vanished in Montezuma in May. Hey, Haley. Before his birthday. DCI investigators are growing frustrated with the lack of clues and hope having his photo at their state fair booth will drum up attention. It's been missing for almost three months and we're trying to spread the word to bring him home. With a goal to hand out 10,000 flyers. We're going to give it to the right person and somebody is That's right. Him. That's right. Home. Support came in all sizes, many the same age as Xavier. It's important for me to be here because... If it was me, what if it was me? I want to bring him home. Oh my, my family and everyone here wants to bring him home. We need. Let me tell you something. I'm about to. When I first watched this, I was ugly crying at these babies. Like, I mean, ugly crying. As even though my heart is so full and they're getting out the message and awareness. What blanketly? What is what is the climate of our world doing to our kids right now? You got the sickness. You got kids being beat to death by their own parents. You know, they got to go to school. My classmates missing, you know, like it's becoming more and more common, you know, like the psyche of our youth, you know what I mean? Like, what is this doing? So even though this warms my heart to no end, and I'm, I'm so glad that they're out there and they're advocating for this baby, but I'm not going to lie. Seeing these kids talk about Xavier. Oh man, I was ugly crying. It broke my freaking heart, man, because I just, it's so sad. That, the, that kids have to go through this, but it's reality is true. And you know what? I mean, I guess maybe awareness for kids, you know, but uh, uh, awareness and, you know, when, how do they even know how to be a kid if they're too worried all the time? They got stress and anxiety and all this other stuff, you know, and we don't help. As adults, we don't help, you know, and it's just, uh, it's just it's sad to me, Hold you know. On. Came in all sizes, many the same age as Xavier. It's important for me yep. to be here because if it was me, what if it was me? I want to bring him home, and my family and everyone here wants to bring him home. We need to keep praying and keep praying so he's able to be home safely. We don't know him personally, but we know people that do, and we know he's a good kid. We all Just a strangers at the state fair stopped to hug Xavier's mother and offer support. I got it. Harrison says she holds out hope her son is alive. Oh, yeah, he's coming home. He's going to meet all these officers and everybody who's been looking for him and put up his flyers. We're out here spreading the word for this missing boy. Hmm. And a reward in this case is slowly but steadily growing. And now sits just yeah, under it's big. thirty-six thousand dollars. Thirty-six thousand. I State Fairgrounds tonight, Lawrence. So I was. Oh wait a minute. There's like Casey sixty seconds Casey left. Let's see. Or you can submit tips anonymously at tipsfbi.gov. And it's scrolling across the screen. Screen too. County Sheriff's Office. 
So let me hop back over here to y'all. So yeah, man, I was, I was, yeah, Miranda, you got the finger. It's an inside joke. Only people that made it to that stream know, but I'm not good at words. And y'all know this. Um, let's see. You want to tuck them all in your no, uh, kids and generational trauma. Yeah. Well, generational bondage, you know, I would fair to say that from birth, from the mother that birthed us and the father that helped, we're fucked. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, you either break the cycle or you don't, you know, and um, it's uh, getting away from us all. Mm, it's awful. So much violence, so many crimes against children. Yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Lord help him, guide him home. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love you too, Miranda. So we just saved some prayers for Xavier and his family. They're still out there, boots on the ground, doing it. Molly's movement. Um, they're still doing, yep, it is embedded till it comes out. That's it. Uh, if you're the dumb tablet, mm, I don't know what that means. Good day. And I think, uh, I think Charlotte Great is on vacation. So we say prayers for her and safe travels. So I was very happy about that. And I'm so glad that, um, she's still trucking. I mean, you, I, I mean, you probably want to curl up. Look at uh, Alicia Navarro's mom. My God, man. Every day she's posting a new billboard. She's posting this. She's posting other people's kids. You know, like that's something else that, you know, she she's jumped in and she's helping other families, other mothers of missing kids. And um, I mean, um, it's not it's not ideal, but it's it helps her. It helps other families. And uh, it's comfort. You know, I mean, it's comfort. Uh, my heart breaks for all these families in a way I could never understand and explain to experience it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I, I'm i not going to lie. Uh, what is your stinking handle? I only see half of it. SG money. I'm not going to lie. Once that second day passed, I was getting a little, I was getting a little concerned for Raylan. But praise God, man, she was found. Like, God, you can only, that's all you can hope for. In fact, there's been a lot of kids over the past couple of days that's been found. There was a kid named Chase. He was recovered. Raylan, there was another little girl, Good Day, and Janet sent me, sent it to me. I can't remember her name, but she was recovered. So kids do get recovered, but like in the same breath, like uh, you got um, Michael Monkey Bond still missing. Blonde hair, blue eyes. You got Summer. You got Xavier. You got so many. Um... This kid Terrence that just went missing uh, last night. I mean, yeah, just help. Honey Bunch, you're exactly right. It's just helplessness. Like, what do you do? Like, what do you do? You know, I mean, it's sad. I mean, it's, uh, and yeah, what do you do? You know, I mean, I don't know. Um, and I know sweet summer's missing. I'm, I, I'm not like avoiding this topic of summer. It's just nothing's coming out. And I would just assume, like, I don't mind talking about, her on the stream, we, we could completely talk about her on the stream, but I'm not going to put her in the title. I don't have any new information. So I, to me, that's, uh, I got my own opinions on both sides. You know, I think there's, everybody can find a healthy balance. There is a healthy balance. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, propping up potential baby killers or, you know, assuming they're already guilty. Either way, that's not good. You know, the kid's missing. You know, she's missing. Let's focus on that. Like, um, do they have boots on the ground? Like with Xavier? And maybe it's probably because I'm more attached to Xavier's case because of the, the mom and everything. But in Darcy, but um, it, it, I don't know if that's it. But at the same time, I mean, it, awareness, awareness, awareness. But, you know, I don't know, man. Uh, uh, we could talk about it in a minute. I guess I'm just going to keep it moving for now. So let's look at this one. I saw this. It happened a couple days ago. I have a few things pulled up. Mm, this is crazy. This was a uh, a kidnapping and uh, turned into murder. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, and this it's a rapper, apparently, his girlfriend. I didn't even know this. I had already put this story in my box. Um, before I found out about her boyfriend being a rapper and all this other stuff. Where is it at? Oh, do, 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 do. Oh, heck. Here we go. So watch this, y'all. This is crazy. 
And we're going to watch this. And then I got one on the 911 call. All right. So let's do this. We are following breaking news at six. A woman kidnapped outside her Atlanta home and then murdered. This is crazy, y'all. This woman, 27 year old Miriam Abdul Rahm. Hey, the- Joy. And tonight, one man is in custody after a chase and a crash in Griffin. That's the man, aftermath there. Money. Chapter 46, above that scene, police say Demarcus Brinkley is a person of interest. And CBS 46 just wow. obtained this exclusive video. Take a look. Oh, it's y'all look at this. New surveillance I'm going to exit out. You can see the kidnapping. Look up here. Progress. Police say Miriam was forced into a car outside her home on Chosewood Park this morning. Her body was found hours later on Lakewood Avenue. That's less than two miles away. We have team coverage starting with Sierra Cummings live at the scene of the kidnapping. And Sierra, this video that you got your hands on will play a pivotal role in the investigation. Now, I know the case has progressed. I'm just trying to put a timeline together so everybody can know what happened. Family is asking for privacy right now, but we want to let you know a neighbor who doesn't want to be identified immediately gave this surveillance video to Atlanta police. It will be a crucial piece of evidence. But again, we want to warn you, it's also heart wrenching a community and an entire family. And this is CBS 46 on YouTube. Family grieving as police have at least one person in custody. Close to 5 a.m. Friday morning, surveillance video shows a car pulling into the driveway. The driver, presumably Miriam Abderrahman. Literally one of my out. worst fears. And within less than a minute, when I another lived car pulls in the up. city. Someone coming behind her, grabbing her, and walking her to get into their car. Crazy. The then getting into the car, driving backwards down the street. Abderrahman is described as loving and caring. Family and neighbors in disbelief. It's just wild. It's literally like out of a horror movie. Like it is everyone's worst nightmare to be kidnapped. And the one place you think you're safe is your home, you know? To just be, ugh, it's just terrifying. She was just getting home from work at Wherever <sighs> VR, where friends say she was a bartender. Police to the Griffin man, Demarcus Brinkley. Worse, I'm still, I'm still following the Shateria Waits case too out of Houston. Y'all know they got, um, What's the guy's name? Uh, Quanell X. I'm still following it. I haven't heard anything breaking out of it. But, you know, it's not exactly the same. But she was at a club. You know, this woman worked at the club. But they went to a club. Her the In Shateria Waits in Texas, they went to a club. Her and her friends, they left. These guys like, oh, I'll come back here. You know, you can make a little money, blah, blah, blah. Just dancing at this, you know, um, apartment's. And her two friends leave her, and now she's never been seen again. So, but we're still following that. I, nothing new has come out, but uh, you won't find me in a club. Let me just say that, which I'm old and half dead, but. Frankly, into custody, but they have not confirmed if he knew the victim. Her father says justice is the only way to honor his daughter. Mm-hmm. Yep, Kara. And well, it right looks like now, neighbors are on high alert after this happened. Now, that video is a little blurry, so it's unclear if the person that's shown is actually the person they have in custody, DeMarcus, DeMarcus Brinkley. But again, APD says they believe he was significantly involved in this case. We're going to gather more details for you. Our coverage will continue throughout the night. Live in Atlanta. I'm Sierra. All right. Mays. And I do have. All right, Sierra. Thank you. I guess this video. A person of interest in this violent crime was uh, located, as we've said, uh, miles away outside of Atlanta, Sean. CBS 46's Jamie Kennedy is live with more on the timeline of how this all unfolded, Jamie. Yeah, good evening, Sean. So everything moving very quickly this morning with that initial call of the kidnapping happening at 5 a.m. Only mat- a matter of hours later, the second call came in. I know, South right? It played out at around 6 a.m. Police got a second call of a shot. Oh, I want to stop. The intersection of Lakeland right. Avenue. And a terrace way near South Bend Park. Yes, yeah, not far a mile away from where the kidnapping took place. Then, just before 10 a.m., police got another call of a body around the corner from where the shots were fired coming in and established. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get to an article here in a second. She was apparently taping an Atlanta rapper named Germ. I, I I don't I just found out about this rapper this morning. So, but we're gonna get into that in just a second. I don't know if it has anything like you know, I don't know, but I do know that they do have you know an idea of what happened. That it was the woman who 
was kidnapped. A person of interest was identified. Georgia State Patrol say they and Griffin Police pursued a vehicle involved in the case. The suspect crashed into another vehicle during the pursuit and both the suspect and the driver of the other vehicle were airlifted to a hospital. Police identified that person as 27-year-old Demarcus Brinkley of Griffin. What we do believe is that we do have a person of interest detained at this time. I would believe that this person uh, detained may be significantly involved in both of these crimes, the kidnapping. Right, Miranda. So it's police crazy. also say that now there was questions raised because the woman kidnapped was also a bartender and coming home late at night about any connection to the Piedmont Park killing. They quickly squashed any connection and say that these are... Oh, ooh, Piedmont Park killing. I don't, I don't know if I'm familiar with that one. All right, I have another article pulled up. Uh, I think I have two more articles put up for this story. It's just crazy. Like people are getting so much, so brazen. It's like it doesn't doesn't even pay to be in a surveillance state. You know what I mean? Like uh, people don't give a shit if they're on camera. I mean, and now, which you know, people, you know, uh, it's not as crazy as it was last year as far as the mask. But I, you know, absolutely, I imagine that you know is a factor. Okay, let's see. So here we go. Uh, let me see. All right. So here's this one. This is a 911 call for this case. Let's see. Same um, outlet, CBS 46. New tonight, a 27 year old kidnapped and murdered. And tonight, we're hearing the moment Miriam Abdul Rab was taken. Atlanta police just releasing the new 911 calls from the shocking crime. Also new tonight, the suspect accused of killing Miriam just booked into the Fulton County Jail. And here's to Marcus. Oh, Brothers. let me slow it down. He is expected for the 911 call. Morning. CBS 46 anchor Tracy Hutchins. I'm going to, I got it sped up a little bit, but I want y'all to be able to hear the call. Let's see. Listen to the 911 calls and explains how they shed light on the crime. Tracy. Rick and Sean, the calls are chilling and horrifying to think about. So a warning that they may <gasps> oh, have okay, to listen to. It all happened as a I do remember that. old Atlanta woman is reportedly kidnapped at gunpoint. Damn. There's somebody just left with my girlfriend. For the first time, we're hearing the panicked 911 call as Miriam Abdulrab is kidnapped from the front yard of a southeast Atlanta yeah, Tracy, home on the awful. phone, Jerry Antoine, an Atlanta musician who says Abdul Rab is his girlfriend. He posted these pictures of the two of them together on his Instagram story. Antoine tells the dispatcher he had just spoken to Miriam moments before and she was on her way to his home on Burrow Street. Man. Oh my God. Bro, I just watched her get kidnapped in front of my house. What the f Oh what my God. Guy. She had a gun pointed to her? Yes, I watched it off in my window in my front yard. He had a gun to her and he forced her into a car. He had a security shirt. But just four hours after she was reported kidnapped, a man walking his dog found Miriam's body on Lake Avenue. Lord Jesus, I walk, I see a Caucasian woman face down. He called 911 too. Lord, this is somebody's baby. Oh my God. Okay, and please tell me why does she look dead? She is face down, her face, her nostrils and mouth are directly into the ground. Oh, oh my God, I see blood around her, upper body and arms. Atlanta police uh. believe Demarcus Brinkley killed Miriam Abdurab. Investigators taking out arrest warrants for murder, aggravated assault, kidnapping, false imprisonment, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, Holy and shit. possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Wow. It is so tragic to hear those 911 calls and how Miriam's life ended. A GoFundMe page has been set up in her name to help her family with expenses. It is a, Had a gun to her and he forced pictures of the two of them together on his Instagram story. And I just want to hear the call again. He had again. just spoken to Miriam moments before and she was on her way to his home on Burrow Street. Oh, my God. Bro, I just watched her get kidnapped her Holy in front of my shit. house. God, uh, God. A gun pointed to her? Yes, I watched it off in my window in my front yard. This he is crazy. And he forced her into a car. He had a security shirt. 
but just four hours after she was reported kidnapped, a man hey, crazy. crazy found Miriam's body on Lake Avenue. Lord Jesus, I walk, I see a Caucasian woman face down. He called 911 too. Lord, somebody, She's gorgeous. Baby. Okay, and please tell me why does she look dead? She just face down. Her face, Man, her this is sad. Her mouth are directly into the ground. Oh, yes, she did. Oh, my God. I see blood. He said, oh, God, this is somebody's baby. I do have another article. I ha Now, I haven't read it. I did see it. It's an article, and it talks more about her, and um, this is awful. So I haven't heard anything, any type of a motive, but um, I don't know. I'm sure we will. It's just crazy. Like get off work, be going in your house. <sighs> Let me see. Heartbreak story. Let's see. Here we go. Revolt. I don't, I don't know. I just saw this when I was looking at different articles. So. I figured we could take a look at this. I have not read this yet. Atlanta rapper. Hold on. All right. Let's see. Atlanta rapper Germ watches his girlfriend get abducted hours before she was killed. A 911 call revealed a Germ saw. Ger <coughs> words. Words. Germ saw Miriam get kidnapped just hours before she was found dead. So freaking sad. German's uh, rising Atlanta rapper saw a man abduct his girlfriend just hours before she was found dead last Friday, August 13th. Germ told 911 operator he watched as a man held a gun to Miriam's head, forced her into his vehicle. Somebody just left with my girlfriend, the rapper told an operator on a leaked audio. Oh my God, bro. I just watched her get kidnapped from in front of my house. Uh, dispatcher then asked Germ if his girlfriend was taking a gunpoint. He replied, yes, I watched it all through my window in my front yard. It's wild that they lived across the street. Um, four hours later, uh, Ab Abdul Rabs, Abdul Rabs, uh, maybe I'm saying it right. Body was found near an abandoned home, Lakewood Avenue, according to investigators. She had been shot multiple times. August 17, 27 year old Demarcus Binkley was booked or Brinkley was booked into a Fulton County jail uh, for Miriam's death after being identified as a person of interest. Binkley's been charged with murder, false imprisonment, aggravated assault, possession of firearm, doing commission of felony firearm by convicted felon. All right, he's being held without bail. So let's see. Last Friday, Germ took to Instagram to share several photos of himself and Miriam as he mourned her death. Damn, today is a different feeling. I watched my real life best friend ripped away from me. This weirdo had to take her life. Shit is sick. I don't know what to do. Wait a minute. I don't know what to do. Shit is stand still. But I'm going to make sure they remember how selfless and happy you were. You didn't deserve this, Miriam, forever. Wow. God, that's so sad. Oh. I don't know that I would have, you know, tweeted the gun picture necessarily, but that reminds me. What story was that? What story was that that we covered? Was it Taraja? Was it Carter? Riri Re, Re Carter? Oh, I'll think of it. I'll think of it. Fever, I would like to tell the group about my experience getting kidnapped. It was possible. Is it possible today? Yeah, for sure. Um. Yeah, I drop a link. Yeah, heck yeah. Mm. Oh, let's do at let's do after we do Mer uh, Mercedes. We'll do that last. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah, I don't agree. I know, right? Why? There's like no motive. Like, uh, damn, it's probably lady probably feels bad. Didn't go get her. Yeah, but he saw her taking a gunpoint. So I don't know. I mean, I can't say. I'm telling you right now. It wouldn't matter. Not only would my hubby come get me, he would already be strapped while he's getting me. So, but I mean, I, again, you know, until it happens to you, how do you know what you're going to do? You know? So, oh yeah, please hit the thumbs up. And if you have to dislike it, just hit it twice because it's different over here. And I appreciate the support either way. You know, uh, wh what is, um, What's his name? Uh, Gray. Gray Hughes says it's engagement either way. But but you got to hit it twice if you want to dislike. You got to 
you know, extra sell it. Um, so yeah, that's it for Miriam. Um, still no motive. Like it's weird. No motive. I mean, he just shot her. It didn't even say that he robbed her. Right? Like it's crazy. It's almost like, you know, retaliation or something like what was the point? And, and I don't know, is there a sexual assault or any of that? You know, it doesn't say any of that. It's pretty much just like a, you know, the way he reads, like a sport killing. He just went out and it, killed her. I mean, but I don't, I'm sure there's a motive, surely. Um, But it's awful. 27 years old, man. Whole life ahead of her, you know. All right. So let's move on to Sweet Mercedes. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, this baby. So this is a, I guess this is like a blogger. I'm not sure. I ran across this. His name is Alex uh, Fings, I guess. I'm not sure. I just seen it. And um, yeah. So uh, Mishawaka, 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 Plymouth. I don't know words are. I don't do good with that. County surfaced out of obscurity in recent days. These parts of Indiana are seeing a brief spike in police activity. Everyone has been hoping and praying for the safe return of an 11 month old named Mercedes Lane. Look at the sweet baby. Her disappearance deployed a large search effort rippled in a mis in a mystery due to changing stories and conflicting accounts. So this article serves as a simple uh, extension outlining the whole thing chronological sequence. The story goes like this. Being a parent 24 seven. No, man, let me say this. I'm not even. Listen, these people, these drug addict, lazy. I don't want to adult people. I was telling my husband about the story last night. I was like, imagine. Can you imagine calling anybody? Okay. And saying, this whole being a parent to an 11-year-old, it's it's just so hard. 11-month-old. Like, you couldn't even make it a full year before you start complaining about needing a break. I, there is so much shit that goes on in one day in my life some days that I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So in my and we're gonna watch the press conference. They don't seem to think that they were selling the baby. They don't, you know, nothing like that. They don't appear to have known that something was gonna happen. Uh, this whole piece of shit right here, he doesn't appear to know any damn thing. He is over there in like an alternate state. Um, and uh, when they got him, he was high on something. They have no idea what. She admitted she was high on meth. So they give this man, uh, Justin Miller, and they give him the baby. Why, you may ask, why would these parents give their 11-month-old child to somebody? Because they needed a break. They needed a break. <laughs> oh, I feel like I need my savage beanie on. They needed a break. So on August 14th, Kenny Lane and Tiffany Corbin left Little Angel in the care of family friend Justin Miller. Because why? Most people just give their child to family friends that's 11 months old. Like there is nobody in my family, no family friends that I would hand my kid over and say, I need a break. Not like that. Not like that. So you may ask what they did on this break. Well, they got high and they hopped hotels, you know. These fucking people, dude. Like, I I got I got nothing, man. Like, I can't even go to the bathroom by myself between an animal or a kid up under my ass. Spare me your bullshit about not wanting to adult. On the flip side, though, when that chemical has you, you are a hostage. But it is not an excuse to not take control of your life. Okay? Plenty of people get clean every day, all right? And they do it at all different times of their life, before a pregnancy, after a pregnancy, while you're a parent. It all is up to you, okay? And uh, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. 
And I would fair to say, if you felt like you needed a, a tiny couple day break from your child, you should have probably found a permanent solution to your temporary break issue. I'm pissed about this one, guys. It's such shit. And here is the, you know, the wonderful babysitter himself who was on synthetic marijuana and decided, hey, I'm just going to do this bullshit pod, which was probably sprayed with fentanyl. Who the fuck knows now? Because the world is on freaking fire. You can't even get, you know, pot without it. Be jacked. It doesn't pay to do anything, but do what you're supposed to do. Live the right way. Like it doesn't even pay to relax. Like he wasn't, he wasn't taking a couple puffs. He was trying to get baked. He wakes up and the baby's just dead, you know, because babies just often die, you know, no. They don't, nor do they vanish into thin air. I, I wouldn't trust this man with my fucking plant. Look at him for shit's sake. I can't see the chat either. All three of them have a lot of things in common. They have served time before the same uh, damnable, uh, damnable reason, meth. Despite the drug-related convictions, Kenny and Tiffany considered that Justin was a good option to babysit Mercedes. It's hard to comprehend this choice. Justin was due to return Mercedes on Sunday, but he did not show up. Shocker. I'm going to hop back over here real quick and make sure y'all are following me. Let's make sure everybody's okay. Is everybody good over here? Everybody good over here? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, man. Apparently, the article writer is just as pissed off as I am. Mm. Let's see. He was supposed to bring the Justin was due to bring Mercedes back on Sunday, but he didn't show up. The parents tried contacting him for a while. What's a while? Five days. And when he finally answered, he gave a lie saying he dropped Mercedes with a neighbor. Let me guess. Was the neighbor's name Zanny? <laughs> That's a Casey Anthony reference. Desp uh, growing desperate, the parents report Mercedes missing that Sunday. Now, I, and I don't know if it's going to tell it in here, but the mom is like, just draw, take her to a, what did she say? Take her to a cart or take her to a, yeah, whatchamadoodle, uh, just put her in a shopping cart or something. Just drop her off. Just anywhere. Oh, God. Oh, I wanted to say too, y'all go support AFC over there, AFC podcast. Uh, DJ Just J. I'm wearing my Logic Over Emotion shirt because that's important. The parents tried contacting him for a while. When he finally answered, he said he dropped the baby off with a neighbor. The report opened a can of worms about their lifestyles. Justin was arrested at 3.30 in the morning on August 16th, which would have been Monday. He gave several versions of what happened. He was staying at a motel in Plymouth with a friend. Because nothing says stable babysitter like hotels, no job, no life, big drug problem. Yeah. Check, check, check. You're perfect. Here's my precious bundle. Fucking get out of here. Then he went on, then he went on to visit his girlfriend in Meshawaka. I don't know. I probably butchered that. For some reason, he was kicked out. So he had to drop Mercedes back with the woman at the Plymouth Motel. Because taking her back to her parents would have been just so hard to wrap around, right? No, I call bullshit. I completely call bullshit. And yes, he admitted to doing drugs while babysitting Mercedes. <gasps> you know, I, you know, uh, they could have just made a party out of it. You know, I'm just so shocked that they didn't leave the damn baby in uh, uh, in the closet or something, you know, and just got high together. Mm. It must be the reason. <sighs> Explaining why the story conflicted because another version takes a different story. Takes different. Uh, another version takes a different, though more accurate direction. He woke up finding Mercedes was already dead. He led the police to a wooded area in Stark County where he disposed of the body. So, here it is. All the way down. He didn't want to be caught. Uh-oh. 
Oops, hold on. Oh. Okay. And I think this is this article's link below if y'all want to check it out. He did a good job at laying it all out. However, police had suspicion against Mercedes' parents as well after, tr after trouble contacting them earlier on. Police then located Kenny to find the father under the influence of an unknown substance. You know what I was just thinking? Where is this? So this, when I was reading it, I don't know why, but it made me think of Amari Nicholson. And Taylor Nicholson, you know, she went to help her mom. You know, she left the baby. You know, why? Where's the where's the neglect charge for that baby? For this against this mother, you know. She she totally needed one. I'm sorry, but she, it looks like karma's kicking her ass. You know, she's had a couple of arrests since he's been murdered. Um, let's see. Police then located Kenny, uh, finding the father under the influence of unknown sus blah, substance charges so far with the discovery of the body in these suspicious stories investigators now have to determine whether the act in itself was intentional for now kenny and tiffany have been charged with neglect of a dependent with no evidence proving that they knew the ultimate outcome and we're about to get to the press conference and uh, they're going to talk more about it <clears throat> justin on the other hand will be charged with neglect of a dependent resulting in death hmm when asked, when asked if any of the three could face drug charges, police respond, it would be the least of their worries. And I did hear that. And we're fixing to dive into that. So, um, all right. So let's hop back up here. Let me get back to y'all. We're going to dive into this press conference. I mean, this is just absolutely, I wish they let the public beat their asses instead of wasting our money. Yeah, I know. I know. It just doesn't even matter, you know? Oh man, I mean, like, are you freaking kidding? It's it is, it's sickening. It is freaking sickening, man. I needed a break from an 11 month old that doesn't even like what was they gonna do when she could actually walk and talk and get into things? This baby didn't have a chance, man. She didn't have a chance. It's so sad, man. It's it's, it's awful. Like, are you, like, who the, an 11 month old baby, you need a break? Uh, people don't even, and God forbid that, that you have a kid that is difficult or runs high energy. Huh. A high strung, I'm telling you, any parents in the chat have high strung kids? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Run you up one side of the wall and down the other and you handle it gracefully. You know what I mean? There ain't no, you know, there's no way to do this, but you don't fucking do that. You know, I mean, it's awful. Mm, let me see. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to see this press conference. <sighs> it's just so shitty, man. I mean, it's it's just awful, man. It's really freaking awful what is going on. I don't know where this damn press conference is at. Hold on. I got it. I'm just... Mm. Give me one second. Mm. And the mom, you know, she she actually trying to cry. They went and oh, hold on, what was that? Let's see. Parents in Mercedes Lane are pleading not guilty. This just came out three hours ago. Hold on, let me pull it up. I just seen it. Let's pull this up. I just seen it. Yeah, make family safe again. Yeah, apps is stinking lootly. These whole pieces of shit. Oh, you're guilty of neglect. You ain't getting out of that one. Oh, you oh, oh, you not getting out of that one. You are not getting out of that one. No way in hell. <laughs> These motherfuckers. Dude. Oh man. The parents of 11 month old Plymouth girl found dead this week are pleading not guilty. Kenneth Lane and Tiffany Colburn made their first court appearance this morning in Mercedes Lane's death. The parents are not accused of having direct role in their child's death. They are charged with neglect of a dependent level six felonies. 
they carry a maximum of two and a half years in prison. And they had the nerve to plead not guilty? <laughs> because why be accountable for anything? You know, why do it's right just because it's right? The, this baby completely deserved more. Official court document details on Lady Baby. We're going to look at that too. They're accusing and neglecting their daughter by leaving her with Kenneth's cousin. Oh, so now he's a cousin. Uh, he was a family friend a minute ago. Doesn't matter. He's still a whole bitch. Justin Miller, who allegedly depo uh, deposed uh, uh, Mercedes' body in a wooded area, says she died unexpectedly Saturday morning. Crock shit. An 11-month-old girl was found Wednesday night along with the, the not guilty plea. Parents are appointed public uh, defenders. I almost said pretenders. <laughs> that's, that's from my older days when I talked differently about authority. <laughs> During the hearing today, Mercedes' father said he was angry and told the judge that he and Mercedes' mom shouldn't be facing the same charges as Justin Miller. Well, she's your kid. She's deceased. Because you needed a break. You remember that, you whole bitch. However, Miller is facing one count of neglect of a dependent resulting in death. That is a much more serious level one felony. Didn't me, I'm fucking flabbergasted. I wish I could see this court proceeding. During the hearing today, Mercedes' father said he was angry and told the judge that he and Mercedes' mom should not be facing the same charges. Well, what charges do you think that you should be facing since you pled not guilty to just a simple neglect charge? So, it's, oh, you think you're going to get away with, no, you think you're going to get away with this shit? Oh, praise God that you are being charged because most people don't. No, I'm no, 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 no. You don't get the right to be mad and talk shitty to the judge. How, what kind of an audacity do you have, sir? Ugh. However, Miller is facing one count and neglect of a dependent resulting in death, which is much more serious level one felony and a minimum 20 years prison sentence, which I hope y'all get the same. Prosecutor told us today that they could be upgraded further pending an autopsy result on little Mercedes. Yeah, because guess what? If they find bruising or anything in different stages of healing, you already know what time it is. Mercedes parents will be back. For a pre-trial conference next month. So let me get to this uh, press conference, which is what I was looking up when I found that. Oh, man, that's got me mad. You got a lot of damn nerve. Oh, you're mad? <laughs> Sir, wh what? <laughs> you didn't even take the simple damn neglect charge. Are you kidding me? Shit. Oh, my God, dude. These people. These people. Like, you just think you can get away with everything. Like, you know, you don't. Nah. Uh -uh, nah. No consequences. No. Let me see. I want to make sure this is the whole video. Mm. I'm getting the press conference about this for us to watch. No. I know. This is not what I want. Give me half a second, y'all. I thought I had it. Let me see. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Mm, I got it. Oh, I'm pissed, y'all. I'm about to get to the comments. Hold on one second. As soon as I share this, I'll be able to read in the chat. Oh, man, this has me big, man. I'm going to change the speed and we're probably only going to listen like 10 minutes of it. Mm, and I still want to allow, you know, five minutes or so before Tracy comes up. But we, I still want to, you know, give Tracy the opportunity um, to tell her story. Guys, how pissed off are y'all? I can't believe he had the nerve to tell the damn judge that. I am so angry that something bad happened as a direct result of my very own actions. <clears throat> I bet he stomped his foot and everything. Your child is dead, you whole piece of shit. Whatever, man. The search for Mercedes Lane, 11 months old. The volume is super low. Approximately 9 p.m. in a remote 
remote, obscure, uh, densely forested area, not far from the Stark County, uh, the Marshall County line. It was in Stark County. Is that speed okay? And she was deceased. <clears throat> Before well, I go yeah, into the details that I, I am allowed to go into, which are going to be uh, rather limited, I'd like to introduce to you Paul Keenan, the special agent in charge. Uh, of Tina, the don't cry, baby. For a few words. <laughs> <laughs> Tina said, I just love it. She can't cuss, Good though. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of our partners. Another fun uh, fact she won't allow you to cuss either. Uh, I love Good Day. Uh, it was a great partnership. God, this is shitty. He's he's not. He's only just saying who he is and thanking people for supporting him. I've literally listened to this like four times. It's stupid, man. What's going on? Yep. It's only one earbud. If y'all are listening, it's not me. It's the press conference. Strong effort, uh, everyone involved with the police. And uh, in my years, I've never seen the, the uh, depth and, and, and breadth of the agencies. Already, uh, I think FBI, that includes Indianapolis Field Office, but also South Bend and Fort Wayne. There's also the FBI CARD, C A R D, stands for Child Ad Abduction uh, Rap uh, Rapid Deployment Team. That's Department what we got with Summer. Marshall County Police. Department, Marsh County Sheriff's Department, of course. It is a uh, Plymouth Police Department case. Indiana State Police. Washington Township Volunteer Fire Department. That's in Stark County. Marsh County Coroner. Uh, obviously, our office. And the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. There's also um, several task force officers. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if, how familiar you are with that concept. S several of the larger police departments have the lengthy periods of time, sometimes years. And there are officers here from the police department also gave assistance. Now, when we're going into okay. um, the case, several of the local media have heard me say many times, at this stage of the proceedings, we are limited by ethics and statute and fairness to uh, <laughs> emphasize that the people we're about to talk about um, are presumed innocent, and that these are allegations and that they are mere allegations that no. can be proven beyond a reasonable There's doubt. no allegedly so, here. So at this stage, all we've reached is probable cause. Grown ass uh, man. Mad. And <laughs> not yet a conviction. If there's a conviction in the future, I can go into much greater detail. So uh, if there are questions at the end, please realize that there's uh, uh, strict limits on what I can say. Okay. It takes so long. So this case started as far as law enforcement. <clears throat> On August 15th, uh, Sunday, August 15th, with a uh, 911 call and a dispatch by Plymouth Police to the uh, Economy Inn, north side of Plymouth. Um, Tiffany Coburn, and, and the, she's, she's the mother of Mercedes, and Kenneth Lane, the father of Mercedes, reported that Mercedes was missing. So subsequent investigation revealed that, um, and all, these, all of this is in the probable cause affidavit that has now been uh, recently amended and filed. And that's why I can talk about it, because it's part of the court record. She was wrapped so, in something, uh, too. He slips here in a second and says that. A lot of confusion from these, uh, from those parents uh, once they were located uh, on the timeline of events. But what it appeared to be was that on Friday, August 13, the parents um, gave Mercedes to Justin Miller um, for reportedly a few days break from their child. Fucking, um, oh, God, dude. He did not bring her back. That's what triggered the 911 call. Uh, eventually, a silver alert was uh, activated. And um, eventually the parents were located because they were not um, easily found. You'll see that in the yeah. In the, uh, probable you cause couldn't even day. find them. Um, on August 16, which would be uh, Monday at approximately 8.30, Tiffany was finally um, um, put in custody. And eventually her husband was also uh, arrested because of what had developed to be a neglect of a dependent case as a level six. Eventually, um, Kenneth Lane was located, the father was located at the Red Rock Inn on August 16, the evening hours. Um, Justin Miller was um, found in Stark County 
at a, at a residence, and he too was brought into, into custody and, and interviewed uh, numerous times. Um, Obviously, on yesterday afternoon, um, after interviewing, um, after several times being interviewed, um, uh, Justin Miller led officers to this location in Stark County. Um, so he led them, Justin. Secured as a crime scene. We waited for uh, synthetic weed uh, guy. Crime scene investigators to, to arrive and process the scene, and it was several hours before. Um, Mercedes body was removed from the area. So I'm going to get this. Result, hey, Lizard Tia. Uh, <laughs> Kenneth Lane is uh, charged with an L, a level six. I'm going to get the affidavit and I'm going to break it down. I'll probably do an isolated video over the weekend. It's neglect of a dependent. Tiffany Coburn, the mother, is charged with a level six felony. Um, neglect of a dependent. And that involves the allegations of uh, giving the child to Justin Miller under the circumstances that, we, that the investigation has revealed. Justin Miller has now been charged or will be charged. The paperwork is being processed as we speak. Um, you know, mister, I'm not guilty. I'm so mad that we're being charged with the same charges that the guy who killed our kid was, who was, uh, you know, I would fair to say, I, I it would not shock me if it was him that asked for this break, you know, but in most of these cases, I'm telling you, that's why I was telling my husband last night. Where is your instincts as a mother? Okay. You're not the first person in the world that had a kid and had a drug problem. Okay. Uh, people don't do this. All right. I'm not, I'm not saying that you need to be around your kids. How, what I am saying is, is like people do kick addiction while they have children. Okay. And they don't make these shitty decisions. She, you know, they're, they're guilty. It was their child. Period. L1, level one, neglect of a dependent resulting in death. Level one is punishable by a maximum of well, between 20 to 40 years. It's probably like weed sprayed with fentanyl. Who the hell knows? Um, their initial. Glad to see you, Lizard Tia. Probably tomorrow. And the court will inquire if they are, are going to retain counsel or have a court appointed counsel. And we're past uh, this. They have retained counsel. Today. So, uh, but that's just the press conference. Let me exit out of that. That's all I have Hold on. To say. And he does it. He just takes questions. And um, so, Tracy, I'm going to drop the link if you wanted to come up. I'm going to I'm going to get that affidavit. Uh, I got to get off of here in the next eight minutes or so. But here is the stream yards, Tracy. So Tracy wants she had an experience where she almost got kidnapped. So uh, we're going to let her come up if she wants to share. You don't have to put your camera on or anything. And uh, yeah, it's awful. So while we're waiting on her, let's see. Loser T, you changed your profile pic, so I don't I don't recognize you without the giant bird on your shoulder. Mm. Do you get the link, Tracy? Mm. Let's see. So I um God. So I wonder what like other families or like other family around. I mean, I'm sure there was somebody else that they could have trusted. For their break needs. So ridiculous. It's so stinking ridiculous. Break. The kid's not even 12 months old. It's not even a year old. You need a damn break. She's 11 months old. Like low maintenance. Very low maintenance. You know. I don't get it. I do not get it. Um. All right. Let's see. I think that is it. Uh, I do have, I do have another story pulled up about a little baby out of Mobile, Arkansas, or Mobile, Alabama, that, uh, it appears like he had some kind of, uh, he'd been abused, like, for a couple years, and then mom got with boyfriend, and it was, it was a wrap from there. Uh, Tracy, you get the link. It's in the chat. Mm. I'm just kind of uh, wait. What are y'all doing this weekend? We're just chit chatting. We only got a few more minutes. So, what do y'all got going on this weekend? What do y'all think about this freaking new? Like, where's it at? Where y'all are at? Is it like bad? I know up here there it's no mask mandate. It's nothing. But I'm in Tennessee, so um, we could pretty much talk about whatever. <sighs> I haven't been. Oh, I I did. Do any of y'all watch Jay for Justice? Uh, have y'all seen what she, you know, about Candace's younger kids? What do y'all think about that? If anything, what do y'all think about it? I think at this point, it's just a little, you know, but, um, what do y'all think about that? 
about Candace Bly's kids. It's pretty sad, right? It's pretty sad. Mm, a lot of generational bondage. A lot of generational bondage in the Summer Wells case. Like both sides of the family, generation after generation after generation. But just completely, ugh, no cycles broken. No cycles broken. Mm. Tracy, are you coming up? Because if not, uh, let's see. Yes, more generational stuff getting passed down. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know. I seen another one too. The, um, who was it? Uh, Tris Twisted. I don't know. There's apparently, there's fundraisers that are out there. Um, that, man, I don't know. It's so convoluted. I just, I'm sick of looking at it. I think there's a healthy balance. I think Chasing Truth does good. I think, yeah, on both mom and dad's side, I think Ray Hughes does good. I mean, if you're going to talk about it, I, I I think Jay for Justice does good. I think she's been pretty fair. I know a lot of people don't like her, but I don't care, you know. Uh, I don't watch people because of the people like them. Uh, I feel like she has been fair. I feel like those three have been covering it, you know. Uh, but uh, on a stream yard, the stream yard not working. Let me see. Let me try one more time. Hmm. All right. I'm going to pop it one more time. I don't know. If you wanted to, though, we could probably set it up a little bit differently. We could even do something and I could, uh, you know, over the weekend or something and we could just put out something isolated. Um, any way you want to do it. Y'all know me. I'm open. Y'all are my people. Y'all want to come up and chitty chat? That's fine. But yeah, um, I'm just so disgusted with all of it. Like, I listen for a minute and I ain't gonna lie. I mean, it ain't too much I don't miss. I do listen and stuff, but I just, I can't bring the same thing. Like, it's, it's too much. That would be awesome. Okay, we'll do that then, Tracy. We'll just do that then. That way you're not rushed and I'm not rushed. And so, but, um, well, that's all I've got. I am... I do. Let me show y'all this real quick, though. Uh-oh. Oops. I guess it would help if I shared my screen first. This is what I was looking at. Uh, I don't know if y'all have seen this, but um, I was looking at this one. Second arrest. So, this sweet baby. And there's different pictures of him. You can tell that the baby has been beaten. <laughs> like over time, like from 2019, there's pictures of the babies and bruises all over him. Um, so yeah, let me see. As soon as this, uh, uh Oh, that's weird. So have y'all seen, uh, where's the picture? I guess there's no picture of the baby. Let me see. Let me go back. Let's see. Charged with murder. Three-year-old boy. Here we go. I mean, let's just do this. Um, and, and even the grandmother, she said the baby was abused. Now, I don't know if somebody did see something and say something and this baby just, you know, didn't get the help. Um, I'm sick of seeing this shit, man. Oh, there, it, there was something else with the James Chavez. Uh, shit. Uh, case his aunt did a Facebook video about an update. I'll be putting that out. Uh, let's see. Did something happen in the in the Megan Boswell or the Evelyn Boswell case? Somebody posted an affidavit, and I don't know. I couldn't get the link to work, and I looked everywhere, but I couldn't find anything. I could not find anything. So I don't know if anything new has happened. A mother and her boyfriend are sitting in a mobile metro jail tonight charged with the murder of three-year-old. Investigators say the little boy suffered from severe head trauma and was in cardiac arrest when they arrived at his home last week. Do you, three years old in cardiac arrest. My God, man. The report states three-year-old uh, Tyron Edwards was found lying on his back, unresponsive, with his mother, uh, Tatiana, kneeling next to him, crying. Oh, but she she absolutely 
because boyfriend's only been on the scene in the past for the past three months right the baby's actively in like every picture she has of this kitty's bruising y'all say oh well, beaver maybe he was you know walking kids are clumsy kids get bruises yeah i get that but they don't you know they don't get giant not nah, like no and there's other family members saying yeah he was abused well uh what is this alabama i know uh kansas city no because of adrian's law if you know about it in tennessee same thing you have to report it if you know there's abuse or something going on and you don't report it you're liable i know this for a fact and i know in uh at least missouri same thing on August 8th, uh, Mobile Fire and Rescue MPD responded to uh, 250 Third Court Orange Grove, finding three-year-old, oh, I've already read that, paramedics tried to revive little Tyron as he was taken to U.S. Children's and Women's Hospital. According to police report, one of the paramedics noted three-year-old had bruises all over his body. Yeah, they said he fell off of a uh, four-wheeler. Officers respond to the hospital to investigate potential child abuse. Three days later, on August 11th, Tyron passed away. MPD says autopsy reports show he suffered severe head trauma as well as other severe injuries and noted it appeared the child had been abused over some time. 26-year-old Tatiana Edwards turned herself into Metro Friday. She's charged with felony murder, as she should be. Investigators believe her boyfriend, 19-year-old uh, Abram Hatch, caused Taryn's extensive injuries. Sunday, Hatch turned himself in on capital murder charges. Mobile Housing Board told me it's heartbreaking by the it's heartbroken by this tragedy. District Attorney's Office said the bond hearing for both Edwards and Hatch is tomorrow, which they've already had. So yeah, uh, this is just one that I was looking at. Um, it's awful, Beverly. Hey. Uh, what you don't know what to believe anymore but the thing is she's still going oh yeah has it let's see has anyone heard of the parents were found guilty uh of the boy of the bison court i don't know i don't i don't know about that one honey and welcome to the stream oh man i can't even same age as my granddaughter i will never stand me either hey it is stacy welcome baby yeah i'm about to wrap it up in a second but i'm glad to see y'all um let me scroll back up Beverly, which what which case is that? I don't know, hon. Um, let me see. Has anyone heard of the parents were found guilty of the bison court? I don't know. Oh shit! I freaking forgot. And I don't have time now. I'm just gonna have to. You don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah, Darius Swan. I put it in the community tab. Go check out Ike Mel's video about it. It's in my community tab. Y'all know this baby. He was missing, and then they found him. They said no foul play. Um, They found him behind a Walmart for apparent gunshot wounds. Family was not allowed to identify the body, not allowed to see the baby's body. So, and um, so they pretty much are like, we don't know who's in the casket. We don't know who we're burying. They will not let us identify our own loved one very freaking strange the kid was at work he went to the store uh he had between 400 and 800 dollars on him all gone all gone no foul play i don't buy it i don't buy it and um it's not that hard and if you by chance and i don't know if this is what's going on but if you have a police department that just doesn't feel like doing a thorough job it's not hard to stage a suicide i'm sorry it's not. It happens more common now than it ever. Well, I see it more now. I don't know if it really truly is happening more. But uh, all right, Stacy. But um, yeah, check it out. And I meant to talk about it today, but I have run out of time. It was a good stream, though. So um, all right, guys, that's it. I'm going to be trying to pop out more smaller videos, trying to get back in the swing of things. Probably going to be talking about different stuff. I don't know. I just, you know, if y'all have ideas, email me, leave it to beaver at gmail.com. Found a new name for my breeding company. Y'all know what it is. My favorite word in the whole world. Sublime. Sublime runs. <laughs> so that's the name under my new little breeding, my little dog breeding venture. Sublime runs. I love it. I'm loving it. So uh, sublime means ma magnificent. So anyways, all right, guys, uh, if y'all have any ideas, thoughts, anything, you know, like uh, stuff y'all would like to see on the channel, things that interest y'all, I'm just trying to, you know, just trying to paint it out, just trying to see, 
Coco Bam is a good example of that. Tracy, don't even get me freaking started. I could do a series on the Kurt Cobain. I shit you not. And there's a lot. There's another story I want to talk about. Have y'all seen the um, documentary Tread on Netflix? Holy shit, this man went crazy. And he put a, he took a damn tank. He Oh, man, it's wild. But uh, pretty much this man gets pissed off. And, uh, oh, you did? That's cool. <clears throat> this man gets pissed off at this town. And it's like a whole to-do. Well, he gets mad and he just like starts running his damn dozer through everything. It's 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 a pretty wild story. But I want to start doing little different stuff like that. And you may not know about the story because it happened uh, the day before Ronald Reagan died. So the story was kind of overshadowed. But um, the Ronald Reagan story, you know, it overshadowed the story of the man, you know, and he took his own life. But anyways, it's a pretty wild story. So we're going to be talking about a little bit of different stuff. Mix it up a little bit, but we will always talk about kids. We are always advocate for kids. I have another, um, I have another story I was looking at about um, uh, this little girl. She's completely lost her ability to talk, her ability, motor function skills, and it's and it's a direct result of what's going on with COVID. I mean, there's different stuff I want to talk about. So you know, if y'all have any ideas, just let me know. The boy belongs to his family, parents, not the police. How can the police deny the parents view in their son, Lizard Tia? I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. It's such a crock of shit. So go look in the community tab and watch that video. I'm going to be putting out something. And um, yeah, um, what did he say? Um, there was other stuff in there. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about Darius Swan. Y'all check it out. I, we talked about him over here a few times. And Ike Mel's been following it too. Y'all have a good weekend. I will holler at y'all. If y'all need anything, let me know. Be kind to yourselves. Make sure you hit the like button. If you got a dislike, just hit it twice. I love y'all. Please be kind to yourselves and have a good weekend.